Welcome to the first dynamic duel with Nico Lo Castro and Eric McKay. This dynamic duel is played in Lake Louisville Park in Louisville, Texas. All right, guys. So we got a nice, bright, sunny day. What? Hey, McCabe. So with this battle, what what discs do you think you're going to be using for this course? Uh, let's see. Out here at the lake, I'll probably be throwing a lot of buzz shots. Would be my guess. And lots and lots of buzzes. Lots of buzzes. And Nico, what uh, what do you th what do you think you're going to have to look out for as far as uh, any obstacles and trees and things like that out here? I think mainly just stay away from the OB and you know try to execute when I have an opportunity to make putts. Just make sure I give it a chance to go in and try to make it a good battle the whole time. Cool. All right, well, we're ready for some good disc golf action, guys. Good luck to both of you. Thank good you. Good luck. Good luck again, Eric. All right, here we go. The first dynamic duel. Eric McKay versus Nico DeCastro. Playing in Louisville, Texas at the at the Lake, Lake Park. Park. Yeah, Lake yeah. Park. You know, hole one first is Nico. A little short downhill. Very very straight shot here. Looking at just about a putter. I think it's like two what was it two thirty seven something like that. Downhill. Gonna play a little shorter since we are throwing downhill. E Matt gliding one down there too. About the same spot as Nico. Yeah. He's got through a little bit there. Very makeable putts for both these guys for two. I didn't get uh, Eric McCabe's uh, shot, second shot there, but he he birded the hole just as well. On to hole two now. This is kind of a blind shot here. We're gonna throw up and over this little little hill. Right down there to the basket. A lot of leaves on the ground right now. Definitely a place you could lose something or lose track of it for a little bit. Guy's definitely making this hole look easy. It's not as easy as he just threw there. Hmm. Looks like McCabe took a different line than Nico on yeah, that one. Big, big hyzer there. That is definitely different. I've actually never seen anybody throw that. Nico taking his time, setting himself up for his second throw. Looks like he's definitely outside the circle there on this one. Nico's got that unique style of putting, almost kind of like a, like he's going to lob it into the basket. Yeah, definitely a hyzer putt from here too. Oh, great putt. Good too. Eric McCabe going for his second throw as well. Straight in. Good solid two. Another easy birdie for both Nico and McCabe. Now on to hole three here. Not a very far hole. Just not a straight shot at it. Going to have to go either way left or way right. It's kind of a risk-reward hole. The risk is obviously the water out over to the left. The reward is is getting the two. Keep turning. Keep turning. Nico throwing a big turnover Anheuser. Looks like he's getting going to get close to that the edge of that water. Oh. Yeah, I think he was safe on that one though. He's satisfied for sure. Eric taking the same line. Just a nice little turnover shot here. Oh, nice oh. shot. Yeah, very nice. Hey. Challenger. There's Nico's where his landed. Pretty close to the water, but he's still safe. Safe counts for sure. Uphill putt. He does have a little little bit of a downhill slope off the back side of this basket, so if he's gonna run at it, definitely want to make sure we're hitting basket at least. Oh, nice putt. Solid putt. McCabe taps it, taps it in and we get double birdies again. Nice. Haven't missed one yet. Nope. Now we're on to hole four, and this is 339 feet. What's unique about this hole, Jeremy? Um, this is actually a lefty hyzer. You can see Nico kind of standing out, standing out there to the left. Another blind shot. Not a straight run out for a righty. 
Uh, most guys here either throw a forehand or just something turned over, a little Anheuser line. I have seen a guy try to throw a hyzer on this, was very unsuccessful with it, but he claimed that it, it can be a local route. I guess he said some guys have gotten through there. That's not too bad a shot there. He's going to have a, a long birdie putt, but nothing outside of his range he can't handle. Looks like Ralph in the background there is excited to see that weenie dog. Nice little turnover shot there with Eric. Mid range looks like it's got a lot of glide to it there. Little little view of the crowd watching. McCabe checking the wind out for himself. Right on this banks of this lake, this wind can do many different things. It can be swirling, it can straight, it could be stalled out. You just never know. Oh, beautiful putt. Nico now for two. Takes down a birdie as well. Neck and neck. Next run to hole five, and this one is 312 feet, and we're still tied. This is probably one of my least favorite holes on here for me. Another one of those, just not a straight shot at it. You kind of got to throw a stalled out hyzer on this. Oh, looks like he's going to get caught up in that. Yeah, I don't know if the wind caught that a little earlier. It stalled out a little too late. Looks like both of them for sure throwing some a sharp edge disc. Probably something very stable. Nice shot there by Eric. It's gonna be quite the precarious putt here out of this this brush in here. I guess he should be thankful it's the time of the year it is. I'm, I'm imagining if this was uh, summertime, yeah. it'd probably be full of leaves. Be full bloom. Definitely make it much more difficult. This, he's trying to, trying to find the best spot for him to get so he can get the best line, but also have the best solid stance. You can see he's, not, he's, he's completely out of his comfort zone right now trying to putt. Can't get in a groove here, so he's going to have to almost push it out of here. And if this was regulation play, he would get, what, 30 seconds to set this shot up? Yeah, most regulation plays, uh, once you once you take your stance, you've got 30 seconds to complete your throw. Oh, not Just missed good. to the left there. Yeah, kind of had to kind of do a little spin putt there. Something he's not quite used to. McCabe's going to get his birdie, and we'll see if Nico can get that par. Which I'm sure he can, but he's not going to be happy about it. Yeah, he's about seven feet away from the basket on this. We'll tap in for, for his three there. Going on to hole six. This is 408 feet. A little bit longer than some of the holes we've seen so far. It's going to be definitely the first hole that they'll get to stretch their arm out a little bit. Kind of a tunnel shot. Basically straight away. Trees on the left, trees on the right. Me a little left. Oh, got the tree. Stopped the forward momentum, so it's going to leave him a long birdie, birdie try for sure. Nico taking his time to get himself up for the second throw. Another should be easy comeback putt. Yeah, another birdie opportunity missed by Nico. 
And Emac continues to knock him down. Be frustrating. It's not to Nico's playing that bad. Just had a couple of bad breaks. Here's the last two holes. We're on to hole seven. This is 324 feet. Now McCabe is two strokes ahead as he uh, capitalizes on a couple birdie shots and Nico falls short. This is a this is another unique one, isn't it, Jeremy, with yeah. the way it's sitting right on the side of the lake? Yeah, and this is probably one of my favorite holes just because it's just a big hyzer bomb. Definitely for righties, too. Eric wanting to squash down, get down sooner. I'd be happy with that shot. The wind right here, too, can do some dangerous things. It can be swirling right here straight in your face or coming straight off the, off the lake into the trees. Doesn't seem like it's ever going with you. At least every time I've been down there, it hadn't. Nico taking the same round. Looks like his didn't catch as much wind. It's going to come down a little earlier. Oh, it's just gonna, short, and oh, it's rolling yeah, away. It's going to roll down. Still rolling. I rolled down a ways. Not a good position for Nico to be in. Within it. Fairly easy birdie range for him, and just got a bad roll away there. That's what we like to call the old tournament roll. Definitely got to think about this, about, you know, keeping keeping pace. Do you want to run at it or lay up and just take your three? Mm, not definitely, quite. Definitely took a little bit of a run at it. McCabe gets his birdie shot. Nico with a little bit of a long comeback putt here for par. Makes it look easy. Mm, a little obvious frustration from Nico. Yeah, got to be a little frustrated with the bad breaks he's getting. Hole number eight, 225 feet. Not a really long hole. Nice little short hyzer shot. Almost a, almost a blind from the tee, blind shot from the tee. Definitely aceable hole. You, you want to be... You want to be almost on target on this, though, because if you're short, you got a chance of a roll away or down behind some trees, and if you're long, you got an even more chance of a roll away back behind it. Staying way right, safe. Way left is definitely dangerous, too. McCabe stretching himself out of that bush so he can get a clear shot, and he puts it right in. Nice, too. So he kind of had to weave through the trees and the number nine sign and the cedar tree Nico taking care of business following up with the two it's got to feel good to finally get another two now we're on the hole number nine 414 feet McCabe takes his throw and smacks right into the tree it's gonna fall way short very short Nico's got to feel a little good about that. I mean, this is finally a chance to make some of those strokes he lost there the last three holes. Give him a chance to play safe and easy par or try to get a birdie. Mm, flip that a little bit. It's carrying off to the right. OB line is the cable on this, not the road. It does look like it's OB and looks like Nico can see that it did go past OB yeah. line. A little frustrated there. Got to be. Chance to make up some ground and might have just wow. shot himself with the foot on that one. There's a little ditch there and it looks like Cave's trying to get himself some sure footing so he can take his second shot. Yeah, he's still still decent distance away. Looks like he's gonna go with the mid range, just kinda Yep, stationary stance. Kind of a semi layup. It's not too bad. Good play. Smart play. So dumb. Nico now a little frustrated. Instead of putting for two, he's this is circle three right here. A 
little bit of a tailwind too, so whatever he throws at, it's going to have to be high because it's going to squash down. Nico's taking his time. Looks like he's going to try to go for it on this one. Yep. A little bit too long and a little frustrated there. Emac now for a par putt. Little nose up. That's safe play. Should be able to walk away with a four there. Nico now putting for a circle four. Gotta be a little frustrated with that. Could have made a stroke up there. McCabe with his fourth throw, and I do believe that's the first hole that he hasn't had a birdie on. On to hole number 10 at 318 feet. Hole 10 here plays a little hyzer skip. Um, do have OB all on the left side, the cable. Nice shot there, though. And doesn't this hole have a mando on it? It does have a mando. The uh, first really big tree there is, I think, the mando line's not marked today, but it will be for the tournament. Just plays that way so that it keeps the pedestrians safe and the motors safe when they're on the road. A couple of great shots by a couple of great players, though. It's getting work done right there. These are going to be easy birdies for both of them. Nice putt by Nico. Very comfortable with that putt. You can tell he just set up. Put it in. No time to think about it. That's a routine putt. Same for Eric. Moving on now to hold 11. 411 feet. Fairly long hole. Um, ooh. That's what you got to watch out on this hole. It's kind of a poke and hope situation, though. You know, there's so many trees down there, and they're all towards the basket. Um, the fairway's fairly open, except for that first tree right there in the front. Just got to hope you can hit a, hit a nice enough line that it gets through everything. Nico definitely trying to stay wide, looking for a big skip left. Looks like he's fairly Hopefully. long. Definitely pin high, though. We keep going with his second throw. Got to gotta be a little cover here because you do have OB just behind the basket. Probably about 15, 16 feet. Little nose up there. I'll put in. Put in for a par. Good safe play. Nico now for two. Got it. Gets his two. I'm going to take the box with that and get back one of those strokes. I do believe he's only two strokes back now from McKay. Going on to hole 12 at 321 feet. Now McCabe's lead has uh, dwindled down to just two strokes. Damn it, Nico. Short little rock shot or buzz shot here. Looks like he turned that over just a little bit. They are throwing into a headwind, so it's going to make, make whatever you're throwing flip a little more. Definitely not going to be as stable. Emac now looks like he's pulled a buzz. And his flips as well. You see the puddles near the tee pad, but the, it wasn't really that muddy of a ground. I don't remember it being that muddy. Do you, Jeremy? No. You know, there's a lot of sand in this soil here. So it really soaks it in and, and uh, packs it tight. Right here by the lake, it's uh, definitely used to the moisture. Nico now kind of got a little awkward, bit of an awkward shot. You know the tree's like, what, three, four feet away from the basket? Maybe a little further. Got quite a bit long, quite a long jump putt here. The problem is, is the tree is right in his line. By the way, he's holding the putter and sizing up his shot. Looks like he's going to try to make a run at it. Just coming around the right side of that tree.
Nico taking his time as he knows how important it is to try to get make up some ground. Definitely with Eric sitting pretty close for a two. He goes for it. Mm, not quite. Not a bad run though. You know, I can't get too mad at himself that it's a good run for the situation he was in. Cabe clearing some debris for himself. Sets himself up. Gets himself another birdie. Another solid two, man. He's on he's on fire. Gets it in there for three and quickly loses that two stroke or that quickly loses uh, the one stroke he made one up. Stroke he made up for sure. Down by three now. Coming into another hyzer. Ooh, got a tree. Not too bad though. It didn't completely stop it, it just kind of deterred the flight path a little bit. Another opportunity for Nico to get it close for a two and make up that stroke again. Nice run up. Looking for a big bomb here. Skip and get close. Oh, yes. Very nice. Nice shot. Inside the circle. It's got to be a two. Birdie in the rest. Emac for a long two here. Making a little bit of a run at it. A long. Up for three, though. Would you call that an island, Bobby? <laughs> With that water puddle, yeah. <laughs> Nico steps up, taps it in, gets his birdie. Good, too. Made up that stroke now. Back to the two stroke lead for Emac. On to hole 14 at 276 feet. McCabe still up with the two-stroke lead. Short little hyzer. Spike hyzer for sure, too. I mean, it's it's just straight up, straight down, little left. And with so much trees in the way, this hole probably changes uh, from season to season. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it also changes, too, on what the wind's doing. I think they've got a little bit of a head crosswind here. Keep going hard left. Oh, nice shot. Dig in there. Nico. Should be manageable, too. It's one of those, you throw it up, if it looks like it's going close, you, everybody gets quiet and listens for chains. Eric wanting to squash again. Yep. Little left. Tree held him up and kept him out from going too deep into the woods. Should be an easy two for both of these guys. You know, I say easy two. They make it look so easy. But you just got to wonder what they're thinking. Are they thinking, I'm going to make this, moving on to the next hole? Or, I mean, I like to get inside the head of these pros sometimes. Moving on the hole 15 at 297 feet. Again to the right, jail to the left with the trees. So he's gonna go out over the OB line and skip back in. Nice safe play. Staying clear of that cluster of trees right down the middle of the fairway. Emac lining up to do about the same shot, looks like. Little hyzer on the buzz, gonna stand up nice and straight. Uh, he went a little a little far there. Yeah, a little long on that one. Play a long birdie opportunity here. Mm. Should be an easy par for Emac. 
You're going to definitely want to convert this too. The two here, this should pull him within one, I think. Nice. nice two. I'm sure Nico's happy about this situation. Yep. Just a few holes left, but but going into them right now with a strong positive feel. Okay, puts it in for his par. On to hole 16. This is a really short one at 194 feet. Yeah, I've played with uh, some of the advanced guys, and they, they always try to skip something very stable. Low and right into the basket. I actually played with a guy that almost aced it. Hit the chains. Spit out the left side. Both these guys laying up with a nice... That looks like a mid-range. It could look like he might have thrown a putter on that one, too. You know what's really odd is uh, during a tournament, I actually saw some people do hyzer shots into this. Yeah, up and over the trees. There is a small window up there that they can hit that. That was my original thought when I first played this course, but I thought, no, nah, just run at it with a stable putter. Easy birdies for both the players here and on to hole 17 at 413 feet. A little bit. This one's a pretty open hole. Um, a few trees uh, as obstacles, but to me it seems pretty simple. Is there anything different you need to do with this hole? Well, it plays, the, the fairway play goes from right to left. The OB's are much closer than it looks. It can be deceiving from the tee pad because it looks like the road would be OB. It's actually the cable. These little wooden stumps, cable running through it. That's your OB line. Um, you know, it's it's reachable. But then you've also got the OB right behind it. But the only thing that I worry about on this hole is digging into that hillside and shortening your drive. It's definitely a birdieable hole. You just got to play it safe and play it smart, and you got to play it perfect. Let's see what Nico does here. It looks like a big Anheuser route. Would very much. Oh. Uh, gets cut short with that tree. Yeah, that would have been a great shot. Putting close to the basket, definitely. Definitely a make or break hole, you know, with them separated by one stroke. This could be a deciding hole. This hole 18 is short enough that it'll play birdie for both of them. Yeah. McCabe hits that same tree, gets oh. cut short as well. Yeah. Now we're both looking at a couple of pars here. Emac laying up. Nice run at it on his yeah. second throw. Laying up, taking his par, putting the pressure on Nico. I was almost thinking, uh, you know, birdie here or ace 18. Making a run at it. Looks good. Oh, just short, man. Also, I'm going to finish up with a three here. Final hole, hole 18 at 228 feet with McCabe up by one stroke. Definitely birdieville hole, you know. Nico's got to run at it, you know. Got to have an ace. Get in. Get in. Be just a little short. Parked for birdie. So right here, you're probably thinking McCabe just needs to play it safe, get it up there as close as he can. Yep, just play safe, get it up close. Oh no! Wow, that's going to be a long, long putt for McCabe. It's going to be interesting for two, for he, sure. It may be a. Uh, Could even, throw it into a tie here. Yeah. McCabe taking his time. Lines himself up. And he puts it in. Oh, that's there. Good job, guys. Been putting incredible all day. I think he knew he had it right before it went in. 
That is fist pumping already. Nico walks up, puts his in, gets a birdie, but it does not help him as McCabe wins his first dynamic duel. All right, so McCabe just won it by uh, one stroke. By one stroke. Take us kind of both of you through the first the first nine holes. What was going on? Um, well, we both started out pretty good. I'd say got one through four, both of us. I made a key putt on hole three yes, that I needed did. to make to keep it a close match. Yep. And uh, had a couple rough kicks that could have went either way. And uh, you know, Eric made some good putts and threw a lot of good drives. It was a close battle, and I mean that's all I could ask for is a close battle, I guess. Yeah. That's what it was. Came down to the last hole. So what do you think? Uh, what advantage did you have, uh, Eric, when to, to go ahead and get the win? Probably a little bit. Uh, this is only Nico's fourth or fifth round on the course, probably, and uh, I've been here since 2000 playing it, you know, and I know every line. I know everything about the course, and confidence will go a long way. So if, uh, from both of you, what uh, what discs do you think that would would play best on this course? I don't know. I was putting pretty good with my magic today. It's all Get, about the putters out here. magic, and it's pretty much putting no matter what round, what course you're playing. If you're making putts, you could score on any course. That's true. Stay away from the OB, and I, I didn't. I went OB. And it doesn't hurt to have a Z buzz in the bag. That's so guys, this is the buzz. Go. So this is the first official dynamic duel. That's what we're calling this. I like it. We really like appreciate it. you guys yep. participating. We look forward to doing some more. Maybe some. Uh, some other videos, glass blown open for sure. Yeah, I'm down. I'd like to, you know, compete wherever, on camera or not on camera. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm competing, I'm pretty happy. Check it out, dynamicdisc.com. All right, thank, thank you guys. guys.